where nobody know what's going on I'm out of place, so I'll just go become a vagabond the Money I smash and they land Talk with the boys, say God will never obey Downplay, payday, little bit of gourmet Hip-hop, I don't main, free verse, I donate King rap, I'm gon' rain Hey guys, welcome to the 5W's interview show. This is the first episode of this show, and today we're joined by a very special guest, Graphic, the man from New York City, literally across the continent from where I'm at, out here in Vancouver. Different con, different side of the continent, different country. Uh, I'm super stoked to be talking to this guy today. He dropped Vagabond, uh, a num like an awesome hit that blew up a few weeks ago. Uh, I found that through an Instagram ad. Good job on him for putting those out. I was like, I gotta check out more of this. Uh, I found it. I went through his Instagram page. I found everything else. And then like a week later, he dropped his new project and I listened to it. I was like, this is so sick. And then uh, since then we kind of just, I, I got in touch and now uh, we're setting up this awesome interview. So uh, graphic, uh, say hello to everyone. What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for the, for the intro, bro. That's super humbling to hear. Dope. Cool. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to say before we jump into our five questions? Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm just super excited to be here, man. I haven't, I haven't really. Uh, this is kind of like my first interview, which awesome. is, uh, yeah, bro. So it's super cool. Um, I like the concept that we're working for on this, and it's just, it's just a really cool opportunity, man. Thank you for having me here. No problem. My pleasure. Okay, so graphic. Our first question of the five W's is who, and I gotta ask, who are your friends on all the interludes? Oh, okay. So I have uh, a very great uh, team of people around me, and the two people that you get to hear on these interludes are my friends Clash and Sean. Yeah. Now, now Clash is kind of like my manager, kind of like my close friend, you know, that type of relationship. Yeah. And uh, he's just the guy that has a bunch of really great ideas and is always throwing them out there in terms of what to do for marketing our stuff, in terms of what to do for getting our name out there. And he's the one that thought of the idea of the Big Come Down podcast. So that's an actual thing that's going to be happening. No. But um, yeah, it was basically we came up with the idea to have him myself and my engineer sean as the three people on this podcast and yeah that's them they're both super talented in their own right uh super super deserve a ton of respect and they're just as hard working as i am they're just as pivotal to the process so yeah i figured i would have them there to show everyone that you know it's not just me yeah that's super sick that was like i was like that was like one of the big things that really set this album apart for me was the fact that it wasn't just music, like you're not selling yourself as just a musical artist. You're like, you're really, you're a personality. You got a lot more going on. And I was like, part of the part that like really made me connect to it. And I was like, okay, this is just a dude that like, I would, I could totally hang out with and have a good time. It's like, yeah, bro. Because I always, I always figured that music should be a, should be an extension of who you are. Right. So yeah, I love the music. I love rapping. Uh, I love being good at rapping, but I'm friends with a whole bunch of comedians. I'm friends with a whole bunch of people that do, you know, sketch comedy and things like that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I want my friends to be a part of this process as well. How do I get them involved? And so, you know, you find different avenues and different ways creatively to involve different people in it. So, yeah, bro, I just wanted to I just wanted to show off every single aspect of myself that I could because like, you know, just as much as comedy is an artistic expression, music is as well. So when you put those together, it creates an entirely different type of animal. Awesome. Cool. That's dope. For the second question, what? What inspired your unique album covers? Mainly the Sunrise Ride and Tour de T Tour de Teed? I'm sorry, I butchered that. I speak French, but like I'm not sure if like you have that in like a French accent or like uh nah uh yeah. so it's just tour de tide, tour um, de tide. <laughs> yeah tour de tide we kept it american okay cool but uh but uh cover art um yeah. so my friend my friend rafael who shows up on the uh album as big kahuna uh he is the most talented person like that i know and so I came to him after I finished the Sunrise Ride and I was like, yo, man, I really don't like I have no ideas as to like what I could do for the cover art. And he's like, yo, I paint like, let me make something for you. So I'm like, oh, OK, you know, because it was like a last minute situation, you know, yeah. like my cover art. The person that I usually go to for cover arts wasn't around. So I was just kind of in a, between a rock and a hard place. 
So he gets he gets to it, and then he sends me the Sunrise Ride, like the cover art. And I'm like, holy crap, this is literally like exactly what I envisioned the music to be like. Oh, shit. You know, like, without even like communicating exactly what yeah. I wanted or anything. He was just able to read that energy and create that piece of art you know that completely exemplified it so that's when i was like yeah this is gonna be like the guy because that was so like, for the that was like the thing that like got me it was like the first thing was like i saw that cover image and i was like i don't care what the song sounds like i know i'm gonna like it i was like i, I knew right off the bat right from there so i just i had to know what was up with that i mean yeah bro he has he definitely has an eye for it i never uh i never really expected something like that out of uh just just my friends, but also, like, to portray my art, you know what I mean? Like, for Tour to Tide, we didn't even have the name Tour to Tide until we got the cover art. Because he yeah. listened to the whole album. He listened to the whole album, and he's like, this is what I want to paint for. it. And then he painted it, and then I'm like, Tour to Tide. The album, yeah. that, the album name that we had before was, like, some sort of, like, uh, it was, like, a kind of, like, a hard rapper, yeah. like, album name. You know what I mean? But with this, it's like, I saw it, and I'm like, bam so all the uh all the album arts especially any of the future ones that i just they're representative of the music itself too and it's really just the connection between the art and the music just flowing together that's so, so yeah yeah i really uh, we'll, we'll, we'll link him we'll add him we'll put shit up for him because yeah he deserves it that was that's some unreal work hell yeah bro done. he deserves it for real our third question graphic are you ready Yes, sir. Cool. For where? Where were you when you wrote Vagabond? Uh, in my room. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I figured, like, the the last few songs that I dropped before that, they were very, uh, you know, just melodic, me singing, very emotionally driven songs, because that was just, like, the type of place, like, the place that I was in, like, you know, mentally. Yeah. So for Vagabond and Aristocrat, I was, uh, I was just sitting in my room, and I was like, this is right when quarantine started. Yeah. So I was sitting in my room, and I'm, like, I'm listening to all these different rappers, because I was just catching up on my rap, uh, you know, like, on my rap... Di- not uh discography but like just just keep me knowing yeah yeah yeah. just keeping tabs you know and refreshing up on everything and i was like yeah i was like and the next few songs that i want to drop i want to make them like just straight up rap and straight up just you know going crazy so i spent i spent i think two or three weeks really looking for beats yeah. Uh, and then i found the vagabond beat my boy made the aristocrat beat and the rest is history dope just cool. wrote him in my room. Awesome. Cool. Graphic, are you ready for the fourth question? When? Of course. When did you start to find your unique sound? Did you go through a phase of making stuff that sounded like everyone else? Or did you always have this kind of boom bap trap style? Not boom bap. It's kind of like it's like an old school boom bap type thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's actually really funny. Um, I... I I don't like to classify myself as like you know, an old school rapper or a yes. boom bap rapper, even though that's mostly the music that I make. Mm-hmm. Just because I feel like there's this stigma that like people that rap over boom bap beats are like old heads and don't listen to new music, which yeah. I hate because some of my favorite rappers are trap rappers right now. Yeah, you know I what think I mean? I put a note in like the article that I wrote about you when I first found it. It was like I referenced you as like an old school rapper, but with like a weird funky twist. Because, like, your ad-libs and, like, your sound samples that you choose are, like, so bizarre that it just, like, it's just, like, it's just, like, really interesting. It just, like, takes it from, like, an old school to, like, you, like, brought it all the way around to being something completely new. Hell yeah, bro, because it's it's really just about being unique and being yourself. And my music, I've always, I've always been just, like, this is who I am. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So whether... Whether I feel like Logic one day and then I turn around and I feel like Drake the other day, you know what I mean? It's still graphic. It's just the different sides and different explorations of graphic. And there, I have, I have a lot of songs from earlier in my career, even now, where it's like an old, it's just like your standard trap beat. And I'm just, you know, rapping about money and cars and women and all that stuff. But I, uh, it's, it's all just like different facets, you know? I feel like, the the boom bappy old school sound is what i sound best at rapping wise mm-hmm. 
but I like to I like to you know keep it diverse, keep it just authentic to whatever I feel. You know, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Awesome. Okay, graphic. We are on to our fifth and final question of the show, and it is the why. Now this question it's a bit weird. Uh, it's definitely one that I had to ask though because I couldn't resist. Why do you describe yourself at, in your Spotify bio in the song The Mad Titan and on G as that Bengali kid who thinks he's a rapper, the brown little dicky looking bo- boy, tongue guzzling <laughs> motherfucker that fakes his plays, signed a deal but got no bread, back whack bars, stupid flow, and a teenage JB hair, always yelling or crying on the gram for attention, mark my words, give it a year or two and you'll probably KYS. <laughs> Uh, okay, know. so, um, I, <laughs> huh, this is, I know, I know how to answer this question, I know what the answer to the question is, I just don't know how to answer it, um, so, I think I get what you're saying, uh, yeah, so, I made, I made the song first, and yeah. there's this, uh, there's an interlude between the two verses, and that's where you hear that. And originally what I wanted to do, I've always wanted to do something like that where I'm just making fun of myself to introduce myself. Yeah. And, you know, I, I kind of just took a combination of everything that everyone has ever said to me. You know what I mean? Whether it be like as a joke or whether it be serious, like people seriously think that I fake my plays or people seriously think that like, you know, I, I don't really know how to uh, rap and I'm yeah. just like, you know, just out here f- fucking around. But, um... You know, I wanted to take that and I wanted to flip it around on its head. Is like, you know, this is who I am. Uh, now it's up to you to determine whether or not you actually agree with that. Do you think I'm just the kid with, you know, JB here that, like, you know, is probably going to kill himself for two years? Yeah. Or do you actually see some potential? Do you see something that you might, like, be interested in? You know what I mean? Because a lot of artists, they they uh, they introduce themselves as like, hi, I'm Raph. I'm a 20-year-old rapper from Hicksville, New York, and I'm really good at boom bap you know what i mean mm. and it, how many times are you gonna hear that before you get tired of it you know uh, so here i am done. like yeah man i look like i rap like little dicky and i look like justin bieber what's up <laughs> <laughs> oh dude oh, that so yeah Dickie bro i just me. wanted to i just just right on the nose like everything and people that have said that stuff about me like they know it's at them too you yeah. know what I mean? So it's like right on the nose. Like, I hear what you're saying. I'm throwing it right back at you. You can shut the fuck up. All you ever talk about is flaws. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I really respect I it. Because, like, when I read that, I was like, I instantly know who, like, I knew exactly who you were. I was like, I got, like, the exact picture. I was like, I know exactly where this guy's coming from. Because I was like, I was like, that's something I would put there. And I was like, uh, I was like, I know exactly who this guy is. He's like, after listening to that reading that and then seeing it in the album and i was just like this is the dude that's just sitting in discord at two in the morning fucking around with like all his buddies hell yeah bro exactly <laughs> that is, that's literally what it is just playing just playing jackbox or watching a movie with my friends oh. just saying mean shit to people <laughs> that's that's literally who i am bro i'm just having fun i'm living my life you know i'm 20 years old um you know i'm still young we're in a really weird place yeah. in time right now and I think the best way to alleviate the situation is just live your life to the best of your ability and have fun doing it. You know what I mean? And that uh, part of that is taking yourself less seriously. So awesome. here I am. Well, thank you so much. I would love to talk some more, but for sake of editing, I got to cut this here. Uh, graphic, do you have anything you want to say to the audience before I wrap this up? Uh, just a few things. First off, my debut album, Tour to Tide, has come out and it is everywhere. You can get it everywhere. Uh, you know, go listen to it. As you can tell, my man right here really, really likes it. Yeah. I really, really like it. Um, I think you guys will really, 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 really re- like it too if you want something that, you know, you haven't really heard before. Uh, on top of that, I just want y'all to live uh, as happily and as safely and peacefully as you possibly can um like i said we live in a weird time right now so the best thing you can do is just be happy and take yourself less seriously and live your life bro just live out here 
Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Graphic, for joining me on the 5Ws podcast. We did our who, we did our what, we did our when, we did our where, we did our why. So we are done. Five questions in and out. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, bro. And uh, adios. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. Okay. We well, don't actually have to dip right there. I'm just.